All right, folks, this is Harris Sultan, and today's video is funny but sad at the same time. It's funny because this guy doesn't only have very clownish takes, but he actually talks and looks like a clown too. Palestine flags to be removed from lampposts. Just here, 268 Olam Rock Road at the campaign office. The boycott movement is working. Yes, I'm talking about this guy. His name is Ahmed Yakub. When he's not a solicitor, he's making a fool of himself. He was a candidate for the position of mayor in West Midlands. Okay, he had no chance of winning, but he did come third. But he didn't give up. He's now set his eyes on the position of a parliamentarian for Ladywood, Birmingham. What are his chances? We'll have a look into that, but first let's have a look at one of his videos. He has taken a leaf out of George Galloway's book, and that is How to Fool the Local Populace. If you guys remember, Galloway contested elections earlier this year in Rushdale. Yes, the home of grooming gangs, also home to a large Muslim community. We had a chance to make the ultimate protest just once, maybe, and only for a hundred days, maybe, we took the opportunity to send the most powerful possible message to Labour, to Sunak, to Israel. You sent a message that went across the whole world. We'll be talking about Rochdale. To be fair, he's always exhibited anti-Israel, borderline anti-Semitic views, but this time he saw an opening and made a move. Some people from Rochdale have told me that he had different flyers for white and non-white voters of Rochdale. So unfortunately, our Muslim voters are very gullible. If you give them some emotional speeches, then they fall for you. Just say, long live Palestine. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Just do a bit of sloganeering and boom, you got him in your pocket. If you want to really, really manipulate, then pretend you have converted to Islam. You know what? I would actually go as far as saying that Galloway might even convert to Islam one day, only if he sees that he's losing his Muslim support. So back to this guy. He learned it from the very best. This man is undoubtedly the next member of parliament for Birmingham Ladywood, but only if you get out to vote. Only if you first make sure you're on the register, secondly get out to vote, thirdly make sure all your family and friends are voting for Ahmad Yaqub. Ahmad Yaqub, MP. Remember that. Just say... Palestine, long live Palestine, from the river to the, you know, that kind of thing. And you might get a lot of gullible Muslim voters. He doesn't have to tell them how he's going to advocate for better education or health for his constituency. But just say, long live Palestine. Labour thought that the residents of Soho and Jewelry Quarter, Ladywood, Birmingham, will forget their silence on Gaza. Shabana Mahmood has come forward asking for a ceasefire. It's over 230 days too late. Anyway, let's have a look at this video. But before we go further, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Moreover, you can also support me by buying me a coffee. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash Harris Sultan. So let's get to today's video. Let's have a look at what this clown is saying. Palestine flags to be removed from lampposts. That's what the Labour run council won. So the Labour run council that is always appeasing Muslims also wants to remove these Palestinian flags from British lampers. Mm, how disgusting. But they can't remove the love of Palestine from people's hearts. Like we are here in Bosnia and Highgate in my constituency. These people love Palestine and they can't have the flags removed from people's properties as well. Find yourself a representative that can say without fear that from the river to the sea, Palestinians will be free. Remember that. These people love Palestine. Sure, you can love anyone you want. But the question is, do you love Palestine and your Muslim Ummah more than Britain itself? The country that's given you so much? It's this one-sided ostentatious display of affection for a foreign country that makes people doubt your allegiance, especially when we have so many people who say stuff like this. I can say I love Israel and I want Israel to exist, but does that mean that I put Israel before Australia? No, it would never happen. And I would never even give that impression. But these guys don't care. They've created their insular 
parallel societies which have their own norms and rules. He understands, and he's learned that from the very best, George Galloway. He understands that if he says things like, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, 50 to 70% of Muslims will vote for him. So does he actually have a chance? I thought I'd look into the population demographics of Ladywood, Birmingham. So according to the 2021 census, Ladywood's population is 25,738 people. In 2019, a Labour candidate, Shabana, won by getting 73% of the votes. So that was a pretty heavy win. They have since changed the borders of the of this constituency, which uh, we're just going to ignore for simplicity's sake. So our comedian is running as an independent and is heavily relying on the strong pro-Palestine sentiment in his constituency. We know that a lot of left-leaning white Britons also have a strong pro-Palestine sentiment, but they are far more likely to vote for Labour than our favourite clown from Birmingham. So out of 25,000 people, 21,000 people are of voting age. 8,700 are Christians, 8,300 are atheists, and 4,900 are Muslims. But expect a lot of Muslims to be voting. They are more politically astute and interested, so therefore you get a higher percentage of Muslim voters as compared to other communities. Inshallah, all my friends, all, all, all Muslim in Birmingham, around in Lady Small eat, small I'm just everybody to do the thing. Only 40% of Muslims turn up to vote. There are 2 million voting age Muslims in the UK. If they all turned up, we can shake this election. Which is actually very funny because it's actually very un-Islamic. But they still vote because, you know, the Muslim woman got to win. So out of 16,000 atheists and Christians, if 50% vote and most of them vote for Labour, then you could say roughly around four to 5,000 people are going to likely vote for Labour. Ahmed is an independent and he's only up against one Muslim candidate, Shazna Muzamil. But she's contesting elections on the Tories ticket, so I don't think she's going to pose any challenge to our comedian. So there are only 5,268 Asians in this constituency and only 4,500 would be of voting age. Expect at least a thousand votes from white voters because I'm sure at least 10% of white voters would not be happy with the way Labour handled the Israel-Palestine conflict. So our favourite comedian could end up with three to four thousand votes versus four to five thousand votes for Labour. I know this is all an estimation and I couldn't find any recent poll to give me a decent idea, so I did my own maths. Of course, all of this could be wrong, but there is a possibility that we might have the most embarrassing MP in the history of the UK come July 5th. All of rock, I've spoken. They need change. They want change. They deserve change. From the 4th of July, they're going to get change. Just saying, it's too close for my liking. And it is possible that he might win. So what do you think? What did I get wrong? Do you think that we might have the most embarrassing MP in British history? Looking at the tragic state of British politics, I think it's very plausible. Let me know in the comments below. Like and share the video far and wide and also support me by either becoming a patron or just go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Harris Sultan. Until next time, ta-da. If you'd like to support my work, you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan or you can simply buy me a coffee.